Leica and Fujifilm, two camera brands that have extremely rabid fan bases online. And today, I'm gonna try to not upset either of y'all. What if we can live in a world where perfect harmony is achieved? Leica and Fujifilm fans get along. Today, we're gonna try it. We're gonna take a Fujifilm X-Pro3, combine it with a Leica 35mm F2, and see once and for all, is there a perfect combination of the two? Can we find harmony in this camera universe? Let's test it out. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. YouTube, what is good? So we've been getting a bunch of packages in the mail. This is a package from Loom Cube right here. Their Panel Pro, this looks pretty cool. Sent me a panel light for my camera as well. We're gonna try this stuff out on the YouTube channel eventually, but that is not what we're talking about today. We are talking about something else that recently came in the mail. This right here. Check this little thing out. This is called a photo, photo IOX, I'm not exactly sure. Essentially what this does is it allows you to take lenses that are L mount, like this Leica 35 millimeter Summicron F2, and put it onto something like a Fujifilm camera, like this X-Pro3 that I have. Now, the X-Pro3 doesn't make a lot of appearances on this YouTube channel. It's something that I picked up more for my personal photography. It's something that I take with me when I go out on the weekends. I brought it to the Atlanta High Museum with me recently. Have a lot of fun with this camera, but it's not something I use professionally. And as I alluded to in the introduction on today's video, there are definitely some positives to Fujifilm camera bodies. There's positives to Leica camera bodies. There's definitely positives to Leica lenses. So I wanna find out, is it the best of both worlds to take your Fujifilm camera body and throw a Leica lens onto it? Now, with today's test, this 35 millimeter becomes a 50 millimeter focal length because of the crop factor. And I have one of Fujifilm's 35 millimeter F2 lenses that we're gonna test and compare against this later on. But I did a number of tests in today's video. The first is more of a city street photography test. So we're gonna put the GoPro on the camera, jump into a behind the scenes. If you enjoy the video, hit the thumbs up button for me. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Evan Ramp. I am a photographer who's been building my brand on social media as well as other brands' social media for the last few years. And this channel is for any creative people out there who wanna explore ideas, live a better life, and start making money with their camera. So like I said, if you enjoy the video, thumbs up, subscribe. If you're not yet, and all photos in today's video are edited using my preset module. The formulas for each preset are listed next to the photo. If you don't know what that is, it's an editing tool that I have for people on this channel so you can replicate the looks of each individual photo that you see in a video rather than me just slapping a one size fits all preset on there. You can see each piece of the edit broken down so you can take it and apply it to your photos and tweak it accordingly. With all that out of the way, let's jump into this behind the scenes. So there we go, that is the first test. I wasn't super happy with this test, just the photo conditions weren't the greatest. I didn't produce my best work ever. Ironically, the photo that I made of the city from the air came out way better than anything I made with this camera. And because this test didn't go so great, I took this camera out to a small town outside of Atlanta to try it out there and see if we had better luck emulating more film style photos, which I think is the type of thing a lot of people would be using this setup for.
So briefly, I wanna thank the sponsor on today's video, Squarespace. If you are someone who is interested in photography, I'm gonna go ahead and assume you are because you clicked on this video, Squarespace is the next step in your business journey. This is how easy it is to build a simple blog post on Squarespace. We're gonna use the photos from today's video. We're gonna to go to my blog at evanranf.com and we are gonna post these photos up for anyone to see. It takes less than 10 minutes. And if you are someone who watches this channel frequently, you know that in 2020, I posted a video breaking down exactly how I built Evan Ramp com. I'll go ahead and link that in the description down below. The reason why websites are so important for creatives is one, they give you a professional element to you. Someone sees your website and immediately associates you with someone who's doing professional business. And also it allows you a way to showcase either your portfolio, the things that you're creating, or even sell products to the people that follow you online. So if you're a photographer creating landscape photos, you can create a website with Squarespace dedicated to selling these prints. And I have a video on this channel that I'll also link below in the description that shows you how to build a print website if that's something that you're into. And Squarespace is hooking up everyone who watches this video today with a free trial. Just go to the link in the description on today's video. You can follow along one of those tutorials that I told you about. And when you're ready to sign up, you can use code Evan Ramp to save yourself 10%. Don't take my word for it. Try it now at squarespace.com slash Evan Ramp. And when you're ready to sign up, you can use code Evan Ramp to save 10% off on the easiest website platform that there is out there for creatives. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsor in today's video. So I was a little bit more happy with how that test went. Still not the most interesting day of photography on the planet. One problem I noticed when I was out in this small town is the focus peaking on the Fujifilm X-Pro2 or X-Pro3, excuse me, when you have this lens on here. It's not 100% accurate when you stop the lens down to something like F2 or F2.8. I was using the focus peaking and I was a little bit off on each one. So that's to be expected whenever you're adapting a lens to a camera. You know, it's not gonna be perfect, I guess. I was just being overly optimistic, thinking that I was gonna get some spot on focus when that's not the case at all. I would definitely take a little bit more time to finesse it if you plan on using this setup and just learn how it's gonna behave. But the final test that I did is I wanted to see, is there even a benefit to throwing this $4,000 lens on this camera when you have an option like this 35 F2 that's actually made by Fujifilm that costs a fraction of the price. I think it's a 10th of the price technically. I can't remember the exact price on this lens. I'll throw it up on the screen. So what I did is I went out with my brother to the Battery Atlanta and we made some quick test photos there. What I'm gonna do is throw these up on the screen side by side and let you try to guess. And then I'll show you which lens they were made with after I give you a second to think about it. Let me know in the comments how many you get right or how many you get wrong. So that concludes all the testing I wanted to do with this experiment, and I'm not gonna lie, after doing that final comparison between these two lenses, I don't really see a reason to adapt a lens like this that's this expensive to the camera when you have an option out there that basically gives you the exact same result. I will say that with the Leica lens on the camera, everything rendered a little bit warmer, which I did prefer. I thought the colors were a little bit better when you were making the photo through this much glass compared to the Fuji lens. I also did like the general feel of the photos a little bit more. They were a little bit softer. They just had a little bit more of an elegant look, but it's nothing over the top. I mean, with the Fujifilm lens, yeah, some of those felt a little bit more digital, a little bit more stale, but it'd be really easy to fix that in post by just dropping the clarity a little bit or putting something like a 1 4th black promise filter or a 1 8th black promise filter on this 35 lens, and you're probably going to get a similar result. So all in all, this little creative experiment really surprised me because I was expecting this to be more of a best of both worlds type combination, but it proved to be 
kind of pointless. I don't really see a reason in doing this, especially if the lens that you're adapting is one that's already offered by Fujifilm. The changes between the two seemed very negligible. It wasn't like there was a big difference. Now, the only exception to this train of thought would be if you had a lens that was hyper-specialized. In today's example, let's say you had a Leica Noctilus and you wanted to take advantage of all the perks of that lens on something like a Fujifilm camera. I don't really know. This experiment kind of turned out to be a dud for me. I went into it expecting a completely different result. And if you're someone who uses Fujifilm, this probably validates a lot of the thoughts out there already that Fujifilm cameras are not that much different than Leica, which I would agree. Most people who are into Leica are into it because of, you know, the brand and all that stuff. But what do I know? I'm just a guy who talks about this stuff on the internet. So if you have some thoughts and you want to get mad at me and yell at me, go for it in the comments. Let me know if you've had any experiences adapting a lens to your Fujifilm camera or adapting lenses in general. I would love to hear your thoughts.